I wanted to open up the show properly, talking about the comedian stuff and talk about this interview that Fia Vaughan had with the guy from Channel 5 News, um, the guy called, from All, Bra- All Gas No Breaks, I think his name is like Andrew Calligan or Andrew something. And he had an interview with Fia, which I'm going to watch the whole thing, but somebody clipped this part where he essentially explains why he left King of the Stink. And as you know, you know, Fia is no more part of it. Um, the show still continues with Chris Lear and Eric Griffin. It's absolutely terrible. Um, it was pretty much on the ropes anyway when Fia was there, when he could make it. But essentially the entire premise of the show was that they would kind of take the piss out of you, piss out of each other. But over time, it felt like Brendan got a little bit emotional and a little bit sensitive and couldn't maybe handle it or couldn't hang in terms of the insults. And essentially it kind of pivoted into just a podcast with, you know, segments of fans calling in and, doing questions and shit and all this sort of lame shit but the original premise of the show was pretty good but now it's absolutely crap and Fio basically explained why he decided to jump off of that train and focus more on his own stuff yeah. I wanted to ask you so what happened to the King and the Sting podcast it's no longer Oh, uh, the King and the Sting podcast. Yeah, the the the, the podcast is still going I'm just not I'm oh, not okay, doing yeah, cool. it you yeah. and Brandon are cool though yeah yeah really? yeah we just honestly man I missed I couldn't, I didn't have enough attention really to focus. Yeah. Like I like, I like my own podcast and we have a unique kind of audience, I think. Yeah. And I think I wanted to be able to, f- I feel a lot more in touch with this now. Yeah. Like it's important to me. Yeah. And it was still important, but it was just a lot to try and juggle. Yeah. I liked uh, the gringo poppy actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think I, people give Brennan so much uh flack and i think that's yeah. one of the reasons i admire him in some ways yeah is how you could withstand so much uh disdain from people you know or fake disdain yeah it's pretty psychotic <laughs> it's pretty psychotic that he's able to withstand such such disdain and keep on going the interesting part is obviously several parts of this um reply from Theo. clearly he's in a far more happier place than he was when he was on the king of the sting now this might not be because of the show he could just be in a better place personally because i did play some clips before where it looked like Fio might have relapsed and stuff and he's already spoke about his struggles with sobriety and whatever it may be and whatever it's not my business Jared, to talk about but you know he's obviously spoken about in his podcast so i'm just going to touch upon it but it might be because he's in a better place in terms of that journey or it could legitimately be the stresses of doing that show and knowing that he didn't want to do it and it was going to shit and maybe the fact that of being linked that intrinsically with Brendan considering everything he was going through in terms of the Bobby Lee drama the Annie drama and the trolls in general was just not really giving him the good vibes that he wanted there's one thing you know about Theo is that he's very much a sensitive good vibes kind of guy he's definitely a sensitive soul in that regard i would assume random things do probably get him down and he generally just didn't like the bad vibes that were basically emanating off of him especially off the back of that bobby lee thing because it put him probably in a good position he's kind of really close to bobby lee and then suddenly now this issue is arising where it looks like brendan tried to fuck halila behind bobby lee's back we don't know if it's true it could be not true it could have happened who knows but essentially that whole drama and the subsequent bullying and intimidation of bobby lee behind the scenes could put him in a really awkward position and it's un it's not needed right because you're comedians like they flip in tell dick jokes on stage and whatever and you know do podcasts and stuff that you don't need all that extra stress for nothing especially for a show that isn't even as good as it once was what's the point and in the time that he was on king this thing he built his entire show this past weekend basically off the strength of his own personality his own solo appearances on the podcast get as much views as the ones he has with guests and he's really good with picking guests he picks guests from you know plumbers estate agents regular average Joe's working interesting careers or jobs that he wants to be he wants to talk about to actual comedians that he's interested in so his show is really um versatile in that regard like it's as it's as good as him just talking to the microphone and recapping his week as it is with him talking to a very interesting guest or somebody that you would never have listened to until they get on Fear's podcast and was able to pull some stuff out of them in that regard and then the other thing that I thought was interesting that he spoke about was just the like the stresses of it and i think it's a bit funny because overall 
it feels like these stand-up comedians are some of the most laziest and entitled people that you ever see in entertainment. For some reason, these guys generally equate doing a podcast and sitting in front of a microphone and in front of a camera akin to doing like late night live shows on the weekend or something, right? Like they're Johnny Carson or some shit. They legitimately think that they're producing a TV show, which is why I think they always talk about how hard they work, but it's not that difficult because they all have producers. They're not self recording like I am and self editing and self clipping and, and uploading and making thumbnails and writing flipping copy and writing, you know, um, titles and descriptions, which I love to do but they make it seem like they're doing all of that but they're not they're essentially sitting in front of a microphone which is the most creative part of it and just expressing themselves and then somebody else does all the maintenance and all the flipping admin of kind of uploading and whatever but they always make it seem as if they're like doing i don't know as if they're working in a mine or something right like and it's crazy because it's not really that deep and theo's even doing the same thing by saying that how adding another podcast to his week of podcasts which is what one is it um one hour or two hours a week or something excluding what he does on the road adding another podcast on top of it which might equal to three or four hours depending if they got extra patreon stuff so it might be six hours of recording in the week not in a day six hours across the week and that's not even a full week it's probably like five days he's complaining and moaning and saying that it's too much work it kind of goes to show that these guys are a little bit out of touch when it comes to that sort of stuff but i thought um andrew's comment at the at the end about gringo so Pap much about gringo Pappy, sorry was absolutely hilarious personally for me uh because he clearly was doing that as a bit of a troll um i can't see someone like him essentially liking gringo Pappy because it was absolutely hack and absolutely awful but the fact that uh theo just said yeah and just looked at him and didn't even say it was good goes to show how terrible that fucking comedy special was in general and the fact that none of his friends are out here saying that it's good they just credited him for being a hard worker that's it no one's saying the special was good no one's basically saying oh yeah you should watch it you should check it out it's really fucking amazing or blow your socks off and he's improving no one's saying that they're just saying credit for actually being able to withstand the hate and just keep putting out content because that's probably his best attribute anyway think about it that is definitely his best attribute when it comes to Brendan. His ability to keep on pumping out stuff um, in general, despite or in spite of what's actually happening and how people view him online is definitely, definitely something that should be commendable. That should be something commendable that in his kind of personality, how he basically carries himself, I think, in my opinion. But um, I thought that interview was kind of funny. Uh, Fear basically explaining why he left Cats essentially it's everything that we kind of guessed it would be especially the people on the flipping firing the kids subreddit i think they called it they were calling it from the very onset in general um just basically saying hey you know this guy looks like he's tapped out he's not interested anymore and i think at the time because Theo looks like somebody again similar to bobby lee which is why maybe they are such good friends he's very conflict adverse i think he doesn't you know like to put himself in uncomfortable positions where he has to kind of say what he really feels i think you saw that a lot when he was going through a hard time and he was canceling random shows and shit especially after his special dropped and people didn't like him bloody blah, blah blah so it felt like he was kind of staying at king of the sting for the most part because he did not want to um he did not want to basically upset or you know let down someone like a brendan who i clearly think they're still friends despite what everyone thinks and despite the fact that most people don't like brendan i think you know um theo and brendan are actually friends outside of all that kind of stuff so definitely it's something that was probably hard to do in the end but he ended up pulling the plug and now it feels like he's looks way f i think he looks way happier than he ever did before he's clearly in a much better space and clearly it kind of all worked out for the best i think in general going forward go in forward um let's move on let's move on what else we got here to talk about i want to see well let's should i mention this or should we go on this one yeah let's go on this let's just talk about this one quickly so somebody from the fire and the kids subreddit big up that sub it's now approaching how many homeless cats it's approaching close to 90 to 100,000 homeless cats on this at the moment 95,060 
people on that flipping subreddit laughing and joking about various things and somebody took a clip in this close-up image of brendan Schaub during the ufc 280 watch along thing that he did kind of versus fight club whatever uh comedy club that he was at and yo this is a frightening sight and if anything 